Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lumen. I'm a 7 Days to Die streamer on Twitch, and this is part of a tutorial series that I'm doing here on YouTube to help newer players with 7 Days to Die better understand the game and some of the tools and resources that are available to you. Today I want to talk about installing and some of the features of the Nitrogen Map Generator, as well as installing the Compo Pack 47 extension for use with the Nitrogen Map Generator. To begin, you will need to access the 7 Days to Die forums on your browser. On the forum page, scroll down to Game Modification. We're going to use both tools and prefabs in this tutorial. First of all, select Tools, and then locate the topic for Alpha 19E in Nitrogen, a random world generator. To begin, once you open the topic, you're going to need to scroll down until you locate the Java information. You will need Java installed prior to installing Nitrogen, so check out this um, portion of the thread, please. Uh, make sure that you have got the install, that it's the 64-bit version, and that you're good to go prior to trying to install Nitrogen. You can also scroll down here for the legend uh, for the POI colors. This can be very handy if you're interested in the specific POIs on your map. Once you have Java, Go ahead and scroll back up and here's your download. And then whatever you have for an extraction tool for zip files, you're going to need to unpack that. And I put mine on my desktop. Uh, install the folder wherever is convenient for you. Once you have this completed, let's go ahead and grab the compo pack. So back up to the game modification, head into the prefabs section. Okay, we're looking for Magley's compo pack. Go ahead and select that. And because we're installing this for nitrogen, the only two sections that we're interested in, this is the download that tells you what comes with it. And then here are your download install instructions. A couple of things of note with the install instructions that are included. When they are referring to this install location, it doesn't specify here, and I feel like maybe it should specify that this is for your Steam, Steam apps folder location. This is not referencing the folder location for any files that you have installed with the mod launcher. I always skip step two. If this is important to you to have some example maps, go ahead and follow the instructions on step two. I'm going to skip down to step three. These are the files that they want you to install. These text files, they want you to install them in your nitrogen folder. So that folder that we just downloaded and extracted, I suggested that you extract it to your desktop but wherever you chose to place it, you're going to put those text files in the resource folder within the nitrogen folder. And that's pretty much it. Once you have those steps done, let's go ahead and launch the executable from the nitrogen folder, nitrogen.exe. And here's the tool. It's split into three sections. You've got your terrain, you've got your POIs and your advanced section. And then here is how you're labeling it and where it's stored. By default, you're generating an 8K map. But you have quite a selection of sizes here, whatever you choose to go with. This is the name that you will see of the map seed once you launch 7 Days to Die. You've got a couple of buttons here for your output folder and for your 7 Days to Die generated worlds folder so you don't have to navigate to them going forward. That's for once you're done generating. And then these are the selections that you want to use. If you hover your mouse over each of these headings, they will give you a small description. These three options most affect the way the world will look once you've generated it, and the way the transitions go from mountainous to flatland, etc. I would suggest you tweak these, move the map over. Once you've generated it, it only takes a couple of minutes. Once you've generated it, pull it over into your Seven Days to Die folder, pop into the game, and have a look at how and have a look at the map. If you don't like how it generated, come back out here and tweak these settings until you get something that looks playable to you. I usually go with mostly flat land. I go with smoothest here and uh, mostly flat. You have a chance with nitrogen to go ahead and dictate the way the roads generate if you have any roads and what kind of damage they take. You can select what sort of biome surrounds the outskirts of your map. You can also select which biomes generate on your map. So if you don't want to play with wasteland 
or if you only want to play with wasteland, etc., you can go ahead and have a look at those biomes there. The roads, I always go with many, but that's me. It does slow down your um, map generation. You can also um, select the default or if you want them more narrow roads so they look a little bit more like a path um, and you can change your road condition here. You can add in small lakes and it's differentiated between small lakes and big lakes. I love this feature. So I can I can generate to have a few small lakes but I can take out all the big lakes because I don't like losing so much of my map to just water. Rivers you can add those in or take them out if you like but the rivers it's a pretty cool feature. It looks really good and they do generate. I'll show you once we get this done, I'll put a few rivers in and I'll show you how it looks. It comes out quite nice. The cracks, when you hover your mouse over this, you'll see it says don't get into them. They're vicious cracks. Um, that's your choice. There's vicious cracks or there's none. And then you, uh, you can set your player spawn location, which is quite interesting. You can set it up for a random. If you're playing with other people, this is excellent so that everybody can spawn in the same location, especially if yourself or the people you are playing with our newer players. It's a nice way to keep everybody together so you all start off in the same spot. And then here the top three are your traders, whether you want city traders, uh, how many traders you want and where you want them to spawn. Uh, so you can do also the, the far from town traders as well and you could also add have city traders in. So you can go, go to town with the traders. There's a, a lot of options there. Cities, be careful with your city size. They will caution you um, in this one here, if you hover over it, it does let you know that the mega city size is extremely performance heavy. So if you're running with less than 16 gigs of RAM, be really careful on how many and how large your cities are. You can also dictate your towns, your town sizes, farms. The rednecks are the trailer parks, old towns, the outback POIs in the countryside or mountain huts. And then if you're playing on a server or if you're playing with multiple people and you want a longer run, you might want to add in more car lots so that batteries and engines don't become an issue in late game. And then you have an option to add in highways. You can add in um, one or two double lanes or one or two single lanes. These are not traversable. They are just sort of the remnants of a highway and they're broken uh, periodically along the length of the highway. And then custom towns, I honestly don't know what this is. It says it's edited by the free prefab list. I usually leave it at none, but I think when it starts off, it has two of each type. This is a relatively new feature and I haven't played around with it a lot. In the advanced section, when you start off, you're going to have just the alpha 19 default, but here is where you would take the drop down and go to 19.3 Compo Pack 47. And that will bring in that most recent Compo Pack that we just went through the installation instructions for. So that will generate those Compo Pack buildings within your map. And at the same time, even though you have that installed, you can still just go with vanilla POIs if you prefer going forward. You don't have to uninstall it to play just vanilla going forward. I never muck around with these settings too much. One thing that is in here and is of note is the darkness falls. You can add in some of the darkness falls zones and then you can select how many maps you generate. So if you just want to generate um, quite a few maps to begin with and have a look at a whole bunch and this one just I think this is just for world creation. I don't muck with that either. Oh and if you don't wish to use these you can also use these manual toggles. Once you're done getting your settings the way you want you just generate world. So I'll meet you back here when that's done. And we're done. It only took two minutes and 36 seconds, even though I did have many roads, which was supposed to slow down the generation quite a bit. I did keep my cities uh, down to large or smaller, so that might have helped a little bit too. The more cities you add in, the longer it will take. Go ahead and click this button and this button, and that will bring up these folders. So here's the map that we just created. You can go in and have a look at the preview. Let me drag this over to the correct monitor and I'll show you. This is what happened when we generated the map. We've got these really cool rivers running through it. They add a really neat feature. We've got a couple of what you would refer to as small lakes, but no overly large bodies of water to impede our travel. We've got our snow biome pretty much at the top. We've got a few deserts sprinkled throughout and a desert at the bottom, and we're surrounded by water. We can even go in and have a look at what's happening in our cities. So these uh, Bright blue buildings are the city center. 
Then you've got more industrial around the outside. I can't remember from the legend what the mustard ones are, but as I had pointed out, that legend is available for you in the forums where you installed the nitrogen map generator. So once you decide that this is the map that you want, go ahead and copy this entire folder. The way it appears now, if I copy and drag this over into my generated worlds folder, if I open up seven days to die, that's what the map seed will look like. So you can go in and set up a new game and you can use Navis gain or you can go into random world gen and you have those toggles where the random world gen is and you can just scroll through all of your options. If I scroll to tutorial and set up a game with that, this is the map that's going to load. And there you have it. I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, pop on over and visit with me during my stream. I stream Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, starting at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. More than happy to have you come and hang out with us, or you can leave a message in the comments section below. Thank you for watching. Take care.